What's going on? You're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. It's Friday, November 26th. Happy album release day. Hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving day as well. This is a special Friday. My favorite artist of all time, Mr. David Bowie, has a new box set out entitled Brilliant Adventure. This is the fifth set of its kind. Comes after Loving the Aliens, which focused on his career between 83 and 88. Brilliant Adventure is going to focus on the years between 92 and 2001. And before I kick this thing off, I just want to say that if you're a fan of Bowie and if you haven't had a chance to check these out, they're worth your time. They're worth sinking money to in as well. The remasters of all the LPs sound amazing. The B-sides and the rarities, I think, are totally worth owning. And there's a ton of amazing album artwork. A lot of stuff drawn by Bowie himself. Stuff that you might not otherwise see unless you purchase these collections. So I would encourage you to do that. And I'm, I'd definitely encourage you to purchase this new one as well. I really like a lot that's going on. And I'm going to start with the time frame. 92 to 2001 is not a time frame that a lot of people talk about when they talk about David Bowie. Um, not a whole lot of commercial success here for him. Honestly, I think he pissed a lot of people off with as experimental as he was. But I want to make the point that David Bowie is the type of artist that he's been a chameleon throughout the years. I mean, he's always done whatever David Bowie wants to do. But, I mean, he's also kind of gone with the ebb and flow of what is currently trending in music at the time. I mean, you can look at some of the disco stuff that he's done, funk, the rock and roll stuff. You look at the 80s, this time period where he very much was inspired by, like, the New Romantic movement, very much pop-oriented as well. And so for him to move into electronic music in the early 90s with as big as House was, uh, as was becoming, I should say, at the time, you know, there's other influences like hip-hop as well that he's starting to dabble in. And I think it makes sense. That's what makes David Bowie such an amazing artist. For me, anyway. He's the type of artist that he likes to experiment. You're going to get a guy who is adventurous and who's going to navigate new territory. Not always 100% brilliantly, but, you know, like, I, I just don't want to listen to an artist do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what I always appreciated about Bowie is his ability to, to just experiment and dabble in different things, but still make that uniquely his own. I love him about that. So this box set, really highlighting all that great stuff in the 90s, kicks off with Black Tie, White Noise. Very interesting album. Big hip-hop influence, jazz, soul, funk on that thing. I love that record. It's also going to feature the Buddha of Suburbia, Outside, Earthling, and Hours are also the remasters in this collection. Uh, you know, he's working with Brian Eno in this time frame. Reeves Gabriels, who actually was his guitar player for the project Tin Machine, when they broke up in the early 90s, I think that lasted for maybe about four years. Reeves continued to work with David. I really liked that partnership there. I think, you know, the work that they did together, I, I'm loving that stuff that's going on there. And then, you know, you, you talk about that electronic influence. You know, he has Trent Reznor open up on a tour in this time period. He turns 50 in this decade. Um, I mean, I, I really, I, I look at a guy who in 1992 has got basically a quarter century under his belt already. He's written what many would probably argue is his best material, and he's just looking to cut out something different. And so I admire these albums for that reason, and I think they're a ton of fun, and they're totally worth listening to. Toy is featured on this album. I love this. Toy was a project that ultimately led into the creation of Heathen. And Toy, is, Toy Like Heathen, I think, is Bowie picking up with this rock influence I think this is the type of album that a lot of people wanted to hear throughout the 90s that, that Bowie just didn't make. And so I'm really, I'm digging this, this album so much. I, I love the album opener. Um, let me see here. I dig everything. It's just got a great vibe, great way to open this thing. You've Got a Habit of Leaving is an amazing song. Probably my favorite, my favorite song on Toy. Uh, it, it's just rocking. It's just got a good heavy feel. Really loving it. Some of my other highlights on Toy, really like The London Boys and Karma Man. And then Hole in the Ground and Baby Loves That Way. Uh, just, just a great album. I'm glad this thing has finally seen the day of light. You've probably heard it in some incarnation. It was leaked, I think, roughly a decade ago. Track listing is different. It's one of those just kind of like, I don't know, apocryphal albums that it's finally gotten to see the light of day. There's all this history and stuff around it. And now we have it in its final track listing. And I think it's really cool. The final version of this album, there's going to be a, a, nice, um, a nice package coming out in January. I believe it's going to be a double disc, if not a three disc collection. So keep your eye out for that. Um, but if you want to enjoy this box set, Toy is available in this collection. And I think it's totally worth at least streaming on your, your streaming service of choice here. And then you got a couple other things that we're working with here. You got the BBC Sessions, the uncut BBC Radio Theater live show from 2000 which is phenomenal. I think the track listing is great. Just a number of phenomenal songs. 
uh, highlights, but also some deep cuts that I think you'll really enjoy. My only beef with the sessions here, when I listen to a live album, I want there to be continuity. I want it to feel like I'm getting that live experience. And there isn't that ebb and flow. The, the audience cuts in and out from track to track, and I, I didn't really like the editing there. I think, uh, I think overall that could have been produced a lot better instead of just clipping this thing together and kind of getting a cut and, cut and paste project. But the overall quality of the music sounds great. And again, the, the track listing is amazing. And then you get the Recall 5, which the Recall refers to all the B-sides and rarities. This is the fifth collection, so you get Recall 5 here. But just a ton of great material that's worth exploring. Uh, a lot of stuff that, you know, if you're a Bowie fan, you've probably never heard. So I have yet to dig through all of this. I'm really excited for the weekend. I'm probably going to spend most of my weekend listening to this stuff while I put down the new tile floor in the room over there. But it's Bowie. I love Bowie. Maybe I'm so biased in this review that I'm just blind in, in the fact that this isn't a good collection. Maybe, maybe you're not a fan of Bowie in the 90s and uh, you're not willing to sink the money into this thing. But I think it's worth it. I, I think these records are phenomenal. I think that a lot of these records are probably projects that Bowie fans maybe haven't checked out in a while. So if you haven't, dip back in, see what you think. I think you might actually find these albums refreshing and, and still very modern too for being you know 20 to 30 years old. A lot of this stuff still sounds very contemporary. And again, I think that's what makes Bowie so great is that he is timeless. You can listen to Ziggy Stardust and that album sounds timeless. So of course, I'm gonna vinyl please this whole package Spend the money on it. I think it's worth it, and I hope you enjoy it in the process. Please like this review, share this review, share it, and do all the things to help me grow this channel. Subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned throughout the week for more album reviews. We'll see you next time on the Beat Sessions.